Imagine a predator that creates its own electronic ghosts, rendering billion-dollar stealth radars useless in a heartbeat. Now, imagine that same predator possessing the kinetic energy to outclimb a ballistic missile and the endurance to patrol the frozen arctic wastes without needing a tanker for support. This is not science fiction. This is the terrifying potential of a new alliance that could shatter the established hierarchy of aerial warfare. For decades, the narrative has been dominated by American stealth and Russian maneuverability. But in the quiet design bureaus of Europe, a different beast is waking up. The Saab Gripen has always been the smart choice, the underdog that punches above its weight. But today, we are looking at a scenario where the underdog stops playing fair. We are talking about a heart transplant for the Swedish Griffin, replacing its American arteries with a British powerhouse that could turn this light fighter into the most dangerous interceptor in the Northern Hemisphere. We are looking at the fusion of Swedish aerodynamics and Rolls-Royce thermodynamics. This is the strategic argument for a Gripen-E powered not by the standard General Electric hardware, but by a next-generation Rolls-Royce propulsion system. To understand the gravity of this shift, you have to look at the physics of modern combat. The current Gripen E is a masterpiece of electronic warfare and ease of maintenance. It uses the General Electric F414, a reliable engine that pushes out 22,000 pounds of thrust. It is a solid engine. It gets the job done. But in the ruthless calculus of air superiority, solid does not guarantee survival. The skies are filling with fifth-generation platforms and heavy twin-engine monsters like the Su-57 and the J-20. To survive in that environment, you need more than agility, you need raw, unadulterated power. You need energy maneuverability that allows you to dictate the terms of the engagement. This is where Rolls-Royce enters the equation. We are not talking about a simple engine swap. We are speculating on the integration of technology derived from the Tempest 6th generation program into the airframe of a 4th generation fighter. Sources and strategic logic suggest a derivative of the Rolls-Royce Advanced Combat Corps, pushing the thrust envelope from 22,000 pounds up to a shattering 26,000 pounds or more. On a heavy fighter like the F-15, 4,000 pounds might seem like a margin of error. But on a lightweight, single-engine knife fighter like the Gripen, that creates a thrust-to-weight ratio that rivals the most advanced air superiority fighters on the planet. Visualize the takeoff. The standard Gripen is sprightly. A Rolls-Royce-powered Gripen would be a rocket. We are talking about a time-to-climb metric that would allow interceptors to meet incoming bombers at 40,000 feet before the enemy pilots have even finished their target acquisition checklists. This is critical for nations like Sweden or Finland, where the strategic depth is non-existent and the enemy is right on the doorstep. In a scramble scenario, every second you spend on the runway or climbing to altitude is a second the enemy owns. With this engine upgrade, the Gripen stops being a defensive fighter and becomes an area denial asset that can contest the vertical dimension against anything the eastern powers can launch. But the kinetic performance is only the tip of the spear. The real revolution happens inside the combustion chamber. Modern air warfare is becoming an energy war, not just in terms of fuel, but in terms of electricity. The sensors of the future, the active electronically scanned array radars, the onboard jamming pods, and the forthcoming directed energy weapons, all have a voracious appetite for electrical power. The current generation of engines is reaching the limit of how much power they can siphon off to run these systems without compromising thrust. The proposed Rolls-Royce architecture features an enhanced power takeoff capability. It is designed to generate massive amounts of electricity, acting as a flying power plant. Imagine a Gripen that can run its radar at full burn, frying the electronic eyes of an enemy formation, while simultaneously powering a laser defense system to blind incoming infrared missiles, all without the pilot losing a single percent of engine thrust. This is the concept of the deep magazine. In the past, you ran out of missiles. In the future, as long as you have fuel, you have ammunition for your energy weapons. A Rolls-Royce engine with advanced thermal management and high output generators turns the Gripen into a directed energy platform. It transforms the aircraft from a kinetic fighter into an electronic fortress. Let us talk about thermal management, 
because this is where the engineering gets truly elegant. One of the biggest vulnerabilities of a non-stealth fighter is its heat signature. The hotter your engine, the easier you are to see for infrared search and track systems and heat-seeking missiles. Rolls-Royce has been pioneering the use of ceramic matrix composites and advanced cooling path technologies. These materials can withstand temperatures that would turn titanium into soup. By running the core hotter but cooling the exhaust more efficiently, you achieve a paradox, more power, but a smaller thermal footprint. You are effectively creating a needle in a haystack. The enemy might see you on radar, but their heat-seeking missiles will struggle to lock onto a target that breathes ice-cold air compared to the blazing infernos of older engines. Now, shift your focus to the strategic map. Why would Sweden, or any nation, complicate their logistics by switching engine suppliers? The answer lies in the concept of sovereignty. The current General Electric engine ties the Gripen to the United States. In a geopolitical crisis where interests diverge, the supply chain for American parts can become a political lever. Washington has a long history of using export controls to dictate foreign policy. By adopting a Rolls-Royce power plant, Saab effectively creates an ITR-free fighter, an aircraft free from the international traffic and arms regulations of the United States. This is a massive selling point for the non-aligned world. Consider nations like Brazil, India, or even countries in the Middle East that want top-tier Western technology but do not want their air force grounded because a senator in Washington decides to hold up a shipment of turbine blades. A British engine Gripen offers strategic independence. It allows a nation to maintain a neutral stance, buying weapons from the West without becoming a vassal of American foreign policy. This opens up a massive export market that has previously been skeptical of the Gripen due to its American heart. We are looking at a potential shift in the global arms trade, where the Gripen becomes the premier choice for the new non-aligned movement. Furthermore, consider the operational environment of the High North. Sweden and its neighbors operate in some of the harshest conditions on Earth. Sub-zero temperatures, icy runways, and short daylight hours. Rolls-Royce engines are born in the rain and cold of Northern Europe. The reliability of these engines in maritime and Arctic conditions is legendary. An adaptive cycle engine, one that can switch between a fuel-sipping turbofan mode for loitering and a turbojet mode for supersonic interception, changes the math of Arctic patrols. Currently, a fighter burns a tremendous amount of fuel to get to the patrol zone, loiters for a few minutes, and has to return. An adaptive cycle engine could increase the loiter time by 30 or 40 percent. That means fewer aircraft are needed to maintain a 24-hour combat air patrol. It means a Gripen can take off from a dispersed highway base in northern Sweden, fly deep into the Barents Sea, shadow a Russian bomber formation for an hour, and return to base with fuel to spare. That is force multiplication. That is how a small air force controls a massive airspace. Let us push the speculation further. What happens when you pair this propulsion technology with the concept of the loyal wingman? The future of air combat is not just manned fighters, it is manned fighters leading swarms of drones. These drones need to keep up. If the Gripen is the quarterback, it needs the speed to get into position and the power to process the data streaming in from a dozen drone wingmen. The Rolls-Royce engine provides the computational power backbone. The increased electrical output allows the Gripen to act as a local AWACS, a mini-airborne warning and control system, fusing data from its drones and beaming target solutions to missile batteries on the ground or ships at sea. The engine becomes the heart of a network-centric warfare node. We must also consider the Super Cruise capability. Super Cruise is the ability to fly faster than the speed of sound without using the afterburner. Afterburners are thirsty, they dump raw fuel into the exhaust, giving you speed but killing your range. The F-22 Raptor can Super Cruise. The Eurofighter Typhoon can Super Cruise. The current Gripen struggles to do so with a combat load. With 26,000 pounds of dry or near-dry thrust, the Gripen enters the Super Cruise Club. It means the aircraft can transit across the battlefield at Mach 1.2, closing the distance on the enemy while keeping its fuel tanks full for the actual dogfight. 
This dictates the pace of the battle. The enemy cannot run, and they cannot hide, because the Gripen can chase them down without exhausting its reserves. There is a psychological component to this as well. When a pilot knows their machine is outclassed in power, they fly defensively. They conserve energy. They hesitate. When a pilot knows they have the highest thrust-to-weight ratio in the sky, they fly aggressively. They take the fight to the enemy. This Rolls-Royce Gripen would breed a new generation of aggressive tactics. It would allow pilots to exploit the vertical plane, dragging heavier opponents into stalling fights where the Gripen's light weight and high power allow it to dance while the heavier enemy falls out of the sky. Critically, we must look at the industrial implications. Rolls-Royce is deeply involved in the Global Combat Air Program, the initiative to build the sixth-generation Tempest fighter. By integrating a Rolls-Royce engine into the Gripen today, Saab creates a technological bridge. The data gathered from flying advanced engine cores in the Gripen feeds directly into the development of the Tempest. It turns the Gripen into a flying laboratory, de-risking the technology for the next generation while providing an immediate upgrade for the current one. It aligns Swedish industry with the British and Italian industrial base, creating a European powerhouse of aerospace engineering that rivals the American giants. Of course, the skeptics will argue about the cost. Integration is expensive. Airframes have to be modified to accept new airflow requirements. But the counterargument is the cost of obsolescence. What is the cost of losing an air war? What is the cost of a fighter fleet that cannot catch the enemy? In the high-stakes poker game of national defense, the most expensive weapon is the second best one. The investment in a new engine is an investment in relevance for the next 40 years. Imagine the scenario, it is a gray dawn over the Baltic. Tensions are at a breaking point. A flight of enemy flankers violates the airspace, expecting to bully the local air police. They expect standard gripens, capable, but respectful of the flankers' raw power. Instead, they are met by a flight of upgraded interceptors that accelerate with violence, climbing vertically at 45,000 feet per minute, locking on with radars that burn through their jamming, and positioning themselves for the kill before the intruders even know the game has changed. That is the deterrence value of this upgrade. It changes the calculation in the mind of the adversary. This potential partnership between Saab and Rolls-Royce is more than a business deal, it is a strategic evolution. It addresses the one weakness of a brilliant aircraft and turns it into a strength. It offers a path to independence for nations tired of complying with foreign export restrictions. It prepares the platform for the energy-hungry weapons of the 2030s. It is a bold move, a risky move, but in the world of air dominance, fortune favors the fast. The road not taken is often the most dangerous, but it is also the only one that leads to total superiority. The Gripen has always been the fighter pilot's fighter. With a Rolls-Royce heart, it becomes the commander's dream and the enemy's nightmare. So, I turn this over to you, the strategists and the enthusiasts. Does the promise of raw power outweigh the logistical headache of a new engine supply chain? Is the ability to operate independently of US regulations the ultimate selling point for the global market? Would you trust a single British engine over the proven American workhorse? These are the questions that decide the fate of air forces. Let us know your analysis in the comments below. If you want to keep exploring the bleeding edge of military aviation and strategic simulation, make sure you smash that like button, subscribe to Air Dom, and hit the bell so you never miss a briefing. Stand by for the next mission.